Hi, everyone. This is Gary. Uh, welcome to this week's live Path to Profit webinar. Uh, for all of you in the investor agent training program, uh, flipping for profits without the risk, uh, rental, pro rental uh, profits without the pain, uh, turning rental problems into real estate profits, or wholesaling, so everybody wins. Uh, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, uh, new students and veteran students. A couple things here. Let me just check real quick and make sure. Okay, but it looks like my mic's working, um, but my sound on my end isn't. So hang on one second. Let me just type this in real quick. So we're live, but we're not recording, guys. So it's a kind of open mic at this point. Um, I'm going to give you my usual weekly message. Hang on one second. Can you see my screen and hear my voice? So I'm going to close mine, open up your question box. If you guys can let me know uh, if you can see my screen and hear my voice, that would be awesome. And it looks like, uh, hey, Rolando, how you doing, buddy? Linda, Kathy Morash. Welcome aboard, Kathy. John Gillis, Floyd, Fassel. Hey, Fassel. Daryl, always good to see you, Daryl. Um, so let me check back on your question box. Let's see if anybody has responded. So, uh, okay, we are live. Um, actually, we are we are recording. <laughs> um, I forgot that comes on automatically now. But nobody has responded to me yet. So I just want to make sure you are all are okay. So you're muted. Um, oh, here we go. Hang on, now we're getting some responses coming in. Good here, fresh calves in the pasture now. Awesome. That's good news, Rolando. Uh, Kathy, okay, everybody says audio and video is okay. I'm trying to do something different this week. Normally I use a headset. This one right here, okay? But I decided to try it without it this week just to see. So, so far, so good. Um, we're going to give everybody another couple minutes to uh, to log in here before we get started. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, now is a good time to type them in. By the way, tonight we're going to talk about hiring a virtual assistant. I've been uh, kind of holding off on this, not on purpose. It just has been other things to go over, and yet many of you have been asking about this subject. So we're, we haven't actually gone over this. I think it's been like a year and a half, so it is definitely long overdue. Uh, many of you are into the position now where you, you definitely need to hire a virtual assistant. And I'm going to show you how to do that tonight. And I'm, the document I'm going to be working from, I'm going to, I've already given it to Beverly to forward to you all tomorrow uh, when you get the recording of this. So definitely get this in the, in the email. Download it. Uh, it's something I worked on, I don't know how many years ago now, several years ago. Um, and everything's obviously still very applicable. So uh, you'll get this uh, tomorrow with a follow-up email. I'll go over it tonight. And you can take notes and obviously re-listen re and re-watch the recording at your leisure. Download it. Keep it on your hard drive. Uh, you can strip off the audio. There's an MP3 converter where you can, for free, you can strip off the audio and just listen to audio when your cars are on your phone or what have you. So in any case, let me check the attendee box and we will get started here. So hang on one second. Also, I'm going to check for questions. Um... Okay, good. We got most of the people on now. So we'll get started here in just a minute. Um, hey, Cedric, how you doing, buddy? Cleo, good to see you guys. Uh, Floyd. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here, guys, right? Uh, before I do, hang on one second. Okay. Uh, busy day today, teaching a class, and uh, wolf down a plate of spaghetti. I think the fastest I've ever done it. <laughs> So we'll dehydrate it. But in any case, uh, let's go and get started, guys. Welcome, guys, to all of you to the Knight's Path of Profit uh, weekly webinar. Uh, welcome to new new agents, new students, um, and investors, and also veterans. Uh, I'm glad to see everybody here. Everybody, you're actually literally from California to to New Hampshire, and uh, even up in Montreal, and even uh, Bahamas here. How about that? We got Bahamas represented. And all the way down, of course, in Florida. So <clears throat> tonight's webinar, we're going to focus on hiring a virtual assistant. We're going to break it down in the why you do it, how you do it, step by step, so you'll know exactly what to do when you decide to hire your own 
virtual assistant. And at some point, you may have multiple virtual assistants like I've had. Okay. So, uh, real quick housekeeping: if you're new to the programs, you'll notice that you're in mute mode by default. Okay. You can use the question box to type in questions. I do monitor those, and I get back to those as we're going to the to the session. Um, from time to time, I uh, may unmute you to bring you live audio, which is pretty cool sometimes. All right, everybody will be able to hear you. Um, so always double check the next day the email from Beverly so you get the recording of the webinar, but also uh, any attachments like this I'm going to have sent to you in the email tomorrow. This is what I'm going to go over tonight. Uh, also, she gives you important updates to our systems, the platforms, and also the content. So it's really important that you always get that recording every week. Uh, the big thing is this is um, for those of you who want to go to the big event in Orlando, that's again, that's St. Patrick's Day weekend, March 16th, 17th, 18th at the uh, Omni Resort in Chansgate. You can still register. Uh, I know we've had a lot more seats go in the last week, um, but there's still some spots available. Uh, you can go to myinvestmentservices.com <clears throat> and right on the front page, you'll see a uh, a visual of Disney World, Magic Kingdom, just click on that and you can get in. Um, so in any case, uh, some pretty good news on that too. Um, the, the, while the hotel block has been exhausted, they have agreed to, <clears throat> on a you know basically daily basis, if you want a room there, they'll see what they can do. They didn't make any guarantees, but they've agreed to work with us on that. Um, so maybe it'll, may be able to still get a room at that, at the discounted rate. Uh, it's like a third off, so it's pretty awesome. And again, they waive the uh, uh, resort fee, and it made park parking only five dollars a day. So uh, come on aboard, guys! I'd love to see you all in person again. Uh, this is where you're going to network with others from around the U.S. and Canada, and uh, also perhaps meet some investors there. But more importantly, we're going to go over all the content from all five training programs in one three-day event. So first time we've ever done it. So you're going to get your your a real load of education and networking basically everything you need to help yourself succeed. So uh, pay attention to that information. I <clears throat> wouldn't wait too much longer. If you're in Florida, obviously it's much easier, uh, but we've got people coming from Washington state and uh, California, New Jersey, New York, uh, New North Carolina, I forget some of the other places, but in any case, back to tonight's session. Um, I'm going to try to slide my screen over here just a second because it's actually interfering with my view of the content. So hang on one second while I do this. Now you should all still be able to see uh, the material. Okay, looks like we're okay to go. All right, first things first, uh, as you get busy in your business, whether you're investing or using your license to help investors or both, <clears throat> like me, you're likely to need, a, need an assistant. It's great to have an admin person locally feed on the ground, uh, but a lot of you can't afford that initially. It just looks like a big expense which leads me to the first myth. Hiring somebody is not an expense. I know it looks that way on your tax return. It's actually an investment in your business, okay? The reason is, is the average uh, increase in gross receipts, gross income for a business is $200,000 on average per employee. Now, most employees are not making $200,000, right? I mean, let's say you pay them 50000 uh, even if you add in all the taxes and everything, you're still dramatically ahead of the game, right? Um, however, for people just starting off in business, um, it does seem like a daunting thought to, you know, hire, can I, how can I pay somebody even 36000 a year, which is 3000 a month? Well, one way to look at it is, <clears throat> let's say you hire somebody. Can you come up with $3,000 this month, or can you, come, can you come up with $750 in one week? The reality is that $750 just bought you 40 hours. If you look at it on a monthly basis, that $3,000 just bought you 160 hours. That's time you can use to find more deals to invest in yourself or help your investors invest, generate a lot more commission income, okay? So remember, it actually is an investment. Now, having said that, uh, you know, getting down to, to nuts and bolts here, some of you are still thinking I, I don't I don't have seven hundred and fifty dollars to, to pay a week's salary or three thousand for a month. I don't think I will in the next thirty days. Well, you can hire a virtual assistant. Typically they're overseas, okay? Um, 
I'm going to focus on virtual assistants from the Philippines tonight. Because that's where I've had my greatest success working with virtual assistants. I work with people from other parts of the world, but I just seem to have the best luck with uh, virtual assistants from the Philippines. Okay. The reality is, is you've got to take this seriously. If you want, you want to grow your business, if you really want to be a productive entrepreneur, you've got to think in terms of investing in people to help you generate more revenue. It's one of the biggest, best, fastest ways to grow. Okay. So uh, the reality is, it was, it's, it's, um, you know, it does take time, energy, and money. Uh, now, on the on the other hand, let's look at what happens when you do hire a full time employee. Okay, these are I'm going to give you some statistics and some websites you can look at. Like right here, there's a 2014 State of the Industry report. Um, everything's relative, so you've got to, you know, some of these things now have increased even more. Uh, the Tax Policy Center gives you uh, historical payroll tax rates. So. Let's just look and see what it actually costs to hire somebody at thirty-five thousand a year. All right, you you would have to pay out forty-three hundred in Social Security. You, the employer, and another another thousand in Medicare taxes. Now, the employee also has to um, pay into it. Um, you put you take it out of their paycheck, and you've got to pay that in to the system. But let's just take a look at this over time. Let's see what's happened, going back to nineteen thirty-seven when we first had social security uh drop in there later on we'd added medicare right um about 30 years later in fact almost 30 years later so look at the rates it was like you know basically two percent when it first started now it's 15 percent combined social security and medicare and that's that's just going back to 2009 i mean this is this is an incredible expense um i mean there's that doesn't even account for uh, the time it takes to advertise, screen calls, interview people, and go through the hiring process, and also train people. I mean, training people is uh, nothing to sneeze at. I mean, you've got to take that seriously. And the average, the average cost to train a new employee is about twelve hundred dollars. That's usually more than that. That's just an average. Okay. Um, so lo and behold, we have an option here. We can hire virtual assistants. Okay. Um, now. Good news is they're contractors, okay? So you don't have to pay Social Security and Medicare on that. Uh, more importantly, when they're in the Philippines, in this example tonight, you don't even have to, to send them a, a, a 1099. You, you just don't have to do it, okay? Um, you have to track preparation, preparation time. You can adequately document your expenses when it comes to your virtual assistant or assistant, okay? <clears throat> and there's software to do it, by the way. The one is this. Um, it last checked, there was about 25,000 professional VA, we call a virtual assistant, VAs around the world. It's more than that now. Um, hotspot, of course, is the Philippines, like I've said here. Um, you can get them from other countries, but it just seems to be a hub for virtual assistants. They can do everything from, you know, at administrative work, legal work, uh, technical assistance, whether it's for your home or your business, they can help you personally too, right? Um, they uh, also, they work out of their homes. You don't have any physical office expense as a result of this either. Pretty cool stuff. Um, there's freelancers that can do creative work. They can do web development work. They can do blogging, or copywriting, all kinds of stuff. Um, to help you out a lot. And the reality is, is uh, it, it buys you time for yourself. So you can use it like I did to, to build multiple businesses, um, or you can transfer some of that into your own lifestyle, your own home life, okay, or some combination thereof. Um, you know, I first started using virtual assistants now over a decade ago, um, and one of them I actually still have today, the very first one I hired. I'm sorry, he wasn't the first one, um, but out of the first wave of hires, I kept him and I've had him ever since. He's a great guy, awesome family man, great, speaks great English, great on a computer, does everything we ask him, and I pay him a whopping $5 an hour. I actually pay him more than the average, and the reality is is in, in his country, the Filipinos, that's a lot of money to them. So, uh, you know, always feel good that you're providing an opportunity for someone and when you find someone good pay them well too 
So I pay him more than what he would normally make, and yet it's still far less than what I'm paying for for work here in the States. I still have a lot of employees, don't get me wrong, but there are things that they can do where you don't have to have a, a full-time employee or someone physically on purse here, on, on in, you know, in place here in the States, right? Um, I've actually even hired him for my own personal life too, doing, you know, a, a planning purposes for travel, hotels, flights, rental cars, you know, Airbnb, all that kind of stuff I've done. Um, it just helps. It just helps keep a, a balanced lifestyle. Um, in any case, uh, you can, there's, websites you can use to here's a couple of them here guys i want you to uh, take note of um staff.com time doctor um allow you to maintain a basically a balance in life okay um any case for the virtual assistants they get to work from home again they get to create the schedule they want and work as little or as much as they want to most of them want to work a lot quite frankly um all right so let's just get into the um the nuts and bolts of this all right what do you actually do and how do you do it? So real quick, let me reduce your attendee panel and go into the question box. And let's see if we got any questions so far. Um, okay, we're good on questions. So far, so good. All right, <clears throat> now. The good news is there is a process to follow. The challenge is it does take time and effort some energy and some money. Okay. Uh, the good news, some good news is you don't actually have to, to advertise um, to hire these folks. There are websites you can go to, and here are some of them right here. So you want to make note of this staff.com, onlinejobs.ph, that's ph for Philippines, by the way, uh, and Upwork. And there's also, um, there's others out there, some of the guys I know personally. There's some great tools, but these are three that kind of come to mind more readily. Um, the first thing you want to figure out is what is your budget, okay? Um, I would recommend when you first hire a virtual assistant, don't feel like you've got to hire them 40 bucks or 40 hours a week, excuse me. In fact, when I hired my first one, I mean, it was 10 hours per week. That was it. 10 hours times $5 is $50 a week that I would pay for 10 hours work, right? Now, now that guy was full time, okay? But what I want you to bear, bear in mind is, is just start small. Remember, start small, learn small, and then grow big, okay? So the, the one thing you want to figure out is what do you have in your budget? What can you reasonably afford? Probably many of you can afford, you know, $50 a week. Um, the good news is this, is that, that 10 hours could buy you another transaction. In other words, apply that time effectively. Um, and discipline yourself to, to use the time for your best benefit. Take on a new client, go find another property to invest in. You, you, you decide what you're going to do. Um, you've also got to figure out um, the pay scale. So if you go to, um, you can go to uh, exchangerate.com, I think is one of the ones I used to use. There's a number of websites to give you the exchange rate between the American dollar and whatever currency you're looking to translate to, in this case, the Philippines. All right. They work in pesos, by the way. All right. So there's, you know, so many pesos is worth uh, so many dollars. In fact, it's a, it's a dramatic uh, difference. In fact, um, well, here you see right here, uh, you know, 18,000 pesos is roughly about $400. And this is probably old information too. I think it's gone up from there. Um, in any case, uh, you, we also pay, I, I pay only on a monthly basis. That's only one check per month, okay? Um, it keeps costs down, and I'm going to show you a website you can use to pay your virtual assistants here in a minute. Uh, but in any case, when you're hiring a, a, a virtual assistant, they'll have different skill levels. Uh, usually, you know, I can, you know, 2 to $3 an hour will get you basic, a basic um, virtual assistant, someone with basic skills. Um, intermediate, someone who speaks some English, uh, might cost you a little bit more. Someone who's good at has writing articles and things like that, they like blogs, right? Uh, you might pay them a little bit more. Someone who can do a SEO and is great at online marketing, you might pay more like uh, anywhere from $500 to $2,000 a month for those guys, right? 
Um, now, if you're working with somebody who's actually a good developer, a web developer in the Philippines, that's going to cost you up, up to 2500 a month sometimes. But believe me, it's worth it. I mean, you might pay, you might pay, you know, four times that for someone in the States. My gosh, okay, um, for, for a good one, someone with the same set of skills. So you really have to be aware of uh, the, the skill level of the person you're hiring. We'll talk about how to test them out here in a second. But initially, you're just hiring usually basic people, basic admin skills, and that's it. You know, I, I wouldn't pay more than $5 an hour. Okay. Uh, these are just simply guidelines, by the way. Now, before you really get started into it, uh, you always want to document the position you're looking to fill, obviously the job description, okay? Job description, you want to identify um, by title what that what that would look like, personal assistant, you know, receptionist duties, website development, content creation, customer support, whatever it is, okay? Also, what I recommend is, uh, in your own notes, uh, draw a, a picture of the person you're looking to hire in, in words, basically, you know, write out skills you want this person to have, the type of personality you have. Um, like, in other words, you might not want to have a web developer be a receptionist, right? They might have, the skills obviously don't align, but maybe, the, maybe their, their personality doesn't align either with that role. So you really do it like you're doing is defining the role. And write it out as thoroughly as you possibly can, because out of that role description, you'll come up with some um, some unique character traits and skills that you're looking for. Okay, very very important. Um, so, what I like to do is this: when I first started hiring virtual assistants, I actually hired uh, several of them. I didn't just hire one; I hired hired a handful. At the beginning, I just hired like two, then I hired like four, and then five. So I could compare their their output with each other, their results with each other, and eventually only keep the one that was really outshining the others. Okay. By the way, his name happens to be Tio. That's my. I've got a couple of them. He's the guy that's been with me the longest. Um, I pay him the most, and the guy can pretty much do anything I ask him to do. Right. Um, he's actually more than full time because he he wants the money. So what you want to do is whatever we do, what we call creating a a funnel. Um, you can go to those websites. All right, and put out there the type of thing you're looking to hire for. Take take as many applicants as you want. All right, um, I would try to keep it. I'd you know, you, it could over it can consume you if you're not careful. So maybe you stop it at 25 applicants. You can review them, pick pick the top five you, you want to interview, or top ten and hire the top five or the top three. Okay just on a trial basis okay i would tell them i'm going to hire you for 10 hours a week for four weeks the reason you want to give them a minimum of four weeks is you're going to have to train them a little bit you're going to, have to show them what it is you want them to do and give them examples and give them time to get acclimated and get used to working with you and that could take a couple of weeks you want to be fair about this be fair uh be reasonable uh remember you're if you want to make this an investment in your business's future, you need to take time up front and actually invest in it, not just a few dollars, but your time and energy and money. Okay. So in any case, so what I would also do is give them a little test up front, just something, you know, 15 minutes, something that they could uh, crank out in 15 minutes, have them write an article on something related to your business, you know, real estate investing, for example, um, or have them, um, you know, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things. Have them write a, uh, give them a marketing letter for them to write, hand write out, see how well they do with that. And then they send that to you in batch and you can send a bunch of those out. Um, you can have them do a number of things. Just something, you just want to test them on something that doesn't take that long right there on the spot. And what they'll do is help you really immediately eliminate or separate the wheat from the chaff. The ones that just can't muster up in the first 15 minute test and make it a simple test. Okay. But the ones that can't, that don't measure up for your results, your expectations, you don't hire them. Okay. Um, the ones that do, you take them to the next level and you keep them and give them a trial period. Again, it says you're a 10 hour trial period. I would generally give them, uh, again, three or four of those trial periods. 
so I can measure results, give them some more instruction, give them some more examples, um, and help them succeed. You know, we we want them to succeed because if they succeed, you know, we succeed. All right. Um, all right. Let me check for questions. Um, okay, we're okay on questions. So back to this. Um, in any case, we talked about their initial test, and we talked about a trial. Uh, you know, the reality is, is uh, most of them are not going to measure up to your standards, okay? Um, but you gotta, you got to test them out in order to determine that and determine the ones you're going to want to keep. Okay, I think we've got a question that came in here. Hang on one second. Um, this is Fassel. Hey, Fassel, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I was curious, what does your VA do well besides travel uh, around real estate? Yeah, so... I have him, so fast, I have him post my blogs. Um, I also have him do some SEO work, okay? Um, he also, um, I'll have him do things on Facebook. Like we, we're always looking out for other groups that we can um, uh, join and do some, some collaborations with when it comes to marketing. But also, more importantly, make sure we're always attracting the right people into our business. Um, so he seeks out those groups and joins them. He also does uh, sends out a like request whenever I go to teach. I mean, I've been in Florida now for the last eight weeks. I've got another two weeks to go. Um, he's been doing a lot of Facebook friending in the state of Florida the, the whole time. So he does that kind of stuff. Um, those are just examples, Fastel. So marketing, um, writing blogs and articles and things like that. OK, um, OK, let's see here. Where did I stop off at creating a funnel? Um, OK, let's talk about what it's like uh, to have one of these folks. So real quick, I'm going to reduce your panel, guys, so I can see the screen more fully here. Um, all right, here's the deal. Um, for every 10 great virtual assistants, OK, there's going to be one who can't seem to handle their work on time, learn from their mistakes. Of course, you let that person go. Don't, don't give them another another trial, okay? I mean, your your time is money. It's, it's not just that you might just cough up another $50, but you may cough up another 10 to 20 hours of your time that you should be using to grow business, okay? Uh, so it's the kind of thing, uh, boy, you want to, um, you know, hire slow and, and fire fast. That's what we like to do, the testing up front. Okay, which leads me to the next thing training you, you do actually have to train these folks and that's why i recommend to start them off uh on a small scale something easy to grasp um something you can more easily articulate when you're explaining things to them something you can provide some very simple examples basic examples of okay um but i always what i would do is i'd give them something small in the beginning something i can easily articulate there's line up bullet items one through ten Give them an example, one I like, one I don't like, okay? Um, make myself available, usually via email. This is all usually done electronically via email. Um, and, and give them one thing that they can succeed at, then give them the next thing, and then give them the next thing, and do it at over time. I mean, T.O. didn't do everything uh, that I just described earlier on the first day. That, that took hmm, probably a couple years, actually. Um, in fact, he didn't even go full-time. I think for like three years or something. So just just remember, you've got to take, you've got to have some uh, some activities that you like to delegate, documented well enough for them to read and understand, and follow your instructions. And definitely, definitely provide examples. Okay. Um, in any case, one task at a time, just like anything else in life, guys. Take them up that first rung of the ladder, get them stabilized, and give them the next rung of the ladder, get them stabilized, and the third step so forth and so on. You, you, you get the, get the picture there. All right. Um, okay. Communicating with them. Uh, good news is they're halfway around the world. Bad news is, is they're halfway around the world. <laughs> okay. Um, I every now and then have had a conversation with the virtual assistants, not very often. Um, but sometimes it's eight o'clock in the morning for me. Sometimes it's eight o'clock in the morning for them. And then we're, of course, you know, half a half a world away, so 12 hours difference, typically. Um, 
So usually we're communicating with them via email. I like email because you can track the communications and keep the emails received and sent with them in their own folder. You just create a separate folder for your virtual assistant. So you have track of all the emails, all your communications. Um, now, the, the, the really cool thing is, is once they get up and running, guys, um, it takes almost no time to manage them. I mean, literally next to zero. It's the most amazing thing. So in the beginning, your, your curve is going to um, – it's a gradual curve that turns the corner over time. So in the beginning, you're taking more of your time, which means you have less time for production to get them up and running. But over time, they become more independent and you get to the point where they're 100 percent fully productive. And you're only spending. I mean, I bet I spend an hour, an hour a month per virtual assistant. Now, that's it. You know, I'll spend maybe another hour um, giving them assignments and explaining assignments. I don't have to train them anymore. I just give them the assignments, okay? Um, and the communicated is just emails back and forth, clarifications. I have them give me their results every single week, by the way. So every week I track what they're doing, what the results are. And I, so I can measure um, how effective they're being, all right? Um, I mean, there's other programs you can use, by the way, to help you manage projects like Basecamp, one of our more popular ones, uh, Asana is another one. Um, in any case, the, the cool thing is, is, uh, some of them will typically be glad to work more than 160 hours a month, but be careful. You don't want to, you don't want to burn them out. I mean, give be reasonable. You know, obviously you want them to produce as much as they can, but you want to be reasonable about it too, because they're, they typically have families. I mean, they're, we're all the same, quite essentially, uh, we just live in different parts of the world and had different, maybe different cultures, different languages spoken, but we're all these people. We all love our children, our parents, our brothers and sisters, and our neighbors and friends. And we want to have a meaningful, full, productive life. And you're going to help them do that by hiring them and paying them. Okay. Uh, let's get on to some nitty-gritty stuff here. How do you actually pay these folks? <laughs> um, I'm going to give you a website I personally use. I've been using it for years. I mean, probably well over 10 years. It's called zoom.com, not Z as in zebra but X as in uh, xylophone, all right, or Xerox, okay? Um, X, xoom.com. So I send a checkout once a month. It costs me a whopping dollars to do it. And it uh, doesn't matter how big or small the check is, it's just $5. And if you can imagine, paying $5 a month for that service is like an absolute no-brainer. I mean, what, what can you get for $5 these days? where you can get the, um, the system to pay the folks in the Philippines automatically, electronically, okay? Um, in any case, uh, you know, they're typically on the, on the virtual assistant side of things that they're coming through an agency, they generally have to cough up part of their profit for the agency, okay? <clears throat> now, a lot of times you can hire someone through an agency and pay them their rate, and later on, you can renegotiate or hire the person directly yourself. Once that contract is up, you don't want to break a contract. But yes, you can hire them um, directly yourself once the current contract is up. Um, in any case, uh, uh, there is a, um, if you go to Time Doctors, it gives you some examples of things, the transfer of money. I want to show you the different ones you can use. All right. Um, these are examples of what you would pay per thousand dollars, right? So one example, you might pay three bucks for the send fee, three bucks for um, currency conversion, total of six bucks. It gets there in uh, three to five days. You can spend more money, and it's it's done in minutes. Uh, you can spend even more money. Look at this one: twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-eight dollars. The sense uh, use some of these tools, okay? Um, and, and I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to recommend or discourage you from using any of these. You can just Google Google it. Uh, international transfer or paying overseas virtual assistants. You'll get all kinds. Uh, I didn't want to put their names up here because I believe I I can tell you that I actively currently use is the Zoom.com. 
these others, I've tried some of them over the years. I just don't use them, but I don't want to speak positively or negatively about any one of them. I suggest you do your own research, okay, and see which ones you like the best. You can see it goes from cheapest, six bucks uh, total cost, to $30 total cost. Um, generally, these guys are okay with getting their check in the mail. It's just going to take some time. The online electronic stuff, I don't see a need for it. I mean, we work out a regular schedule plan of how much they work and how much they get paid and when they get paid. And it's just the first of the month, I take care of it. And that's what I do. Um, the really cool thing is with the service I use, it doesn't take three to five days. It's generally over there in the next day. It's all electronic because they're not actually getting a check. It's an electronic uh, transfer. Uh, cost a whopping $5, okay? Okay. Um, we're going to do one more section here. Then I'm going to call it quits for the day. I don't want to start another another subject because there's just not enough time to do it. And I want to make sure we just focus on hiring virtual assistants. That's all I want to focus on tonight because um, it's a pretty good subject. And I want you to get this document I'm going to send you with Be through Beverly tomorrow. Review it. Try out some of the websites and see what you think, guys. And if you want to discuss this on one of your strategy calls, just let me know. We can discuss hiring a virtual assistant. On a strategy call. So, in any case, uh, here's the results. I have worked with these folks for greater than 10 years now. Um, I don't know how many years, but a lot of years, okay? Probably close to 12 years now. Um, at one point, I did stop, but it wasn't necessarily because I didn't like these folks. Um, it just, you know, things were changing for me. It was more of a personal thing, right? My personal life, things were changing. Thank goodness. I kept in touch with with Tio because I was able when I when I kind of get settled again. I knew I wanted to hire a virtual assistant. Um, he was available. I had him part time in the beginning, and I was able to hire him full time. He now works for me full time. Um, I can tell you, uh, the effort it took to do this is well well worth it. I can't imagine how much money I've saved over the years. Probably, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars I've saved over the years. I mean, there's months I'm writing T.O. a check for $1,000. That means he's worked 200 hours that month. That's a lot of hours. It's 50 hours a week. But, man, is it worth it. If I had to pay somebody like that in the States, it could have been four times that, you know, $4,000 versus, versus 1000 Also, you, they learn to work with not just you but other, other members of your team. So let's say you have regular employees here in the U.S. or Canada, okay, um, and your virtual assistant, you know, can help some of these employees serve some of the roles. You can have them train them too to, to, to help them. So, for example, Tio does just help me now. I mean, any, anything he does obviously helps me in one way or another, directly or indirectly. But I haven't worked with, with – I've had him work with probably three other of my employees over the years. Sometimes he's getting hit by all sides from all of us, okay, and he, he just basically toughs it out and does the work. Uh, I would say overall, this is one of the best things you can do in your business. Um, does it take time, energy, effort, and money up front? It sure does. Just like any good investment in life, it has to or it's probably not a good investment. Is it worth it? Absolutely, hands down. Um, so I hope this helps you tonight. Let me bring the panel back over here real quick and check for questions. Um, well, that's a surprise. Usually we get a lot of questions on this. Um, Oh, thank you. How well can he can write real estate topics? Do you have to correct the grammar, et cetera? Or is his English that good that he can improve his own? Yeah, he's uh, so fast. So he actually does it himself. Um, uh, in the beginning, uh, I didn't want to do it because sometimes in the emails, uh, remember the Philippines was settled by uh, Spanish um, colonialists back in the day. So if you go to the Philippines, you'll recognize they're speaking Spanish. Um, now, Tio and his emails would have a strong Spanish influence in his, in his writing, and I was a little bit nervous about it. But he told me, he said, don't worry, Mr. Wilson, I, I, when I do the articles, I, it's going to come out. You would never know. And boy, was he right. I, I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Okay. Um, so that's good news there. Also, I've been on the phone with him. He actually speaks very good English. Um, so I, in my opinion, man, he's well worth it. And I've had others. Um, one of them was Mary. We mentioned here earlier in this in this document. Um, I don't use her right now, 
the only reason is, is um, um, I, I just don't have a need for it, quite frankly. Um, but I, there's others I've used I would really recommend. I don't know if they're still out there doing it. But, boy, I would use that web, web, website. Um, let me go back here. Hang on one second. Let me uh, find it. It was up towards the beginning. So hang on a second. I said just, oh, here it is. Um, onlinejobs.ph. Okay. Uh, that's one that's directly in the Philippines. Remember, they're going to do some screening for you. They're going to basically uh, bring these folks on, give them some tests for, you know, you know, basically uh, skill sets and screen them for, you know, criminal backgrounds and you know, all kinds of stuff. So you don't have to do all that. They do that for you. You're going to pay for that. But it, but it, I think it's well worth it just to get started. Um, so you can go directly to the Philippines and get that your first or your next virtual assistant hire. Um, okay, real quick, guys, let me do this. So, to, so next week we are going to be meeting on – Looks like Tuesday the 13th. Let me double check that. So Tuesday the 13th. Yes. So uh, again, 7 p.m. Eastern next Tuesday the 13th. Um, <clears throat> I haven't picked a topic for next week. If you want to cover something specific, please let me know. All right. Um, later tonight, I am doing uh, the fourth of a five-part series called the Master Class Series, where I just spent a half hour honing on a specific subject. Tonight's going to be wholesaling. Um, and what we're doing is we're using it to, to get um, uh, other folks uh, at this event. We want to have some investors coming. By the way, real good news. It looks like um, former uh, Boston Celtics NBA center Mark Blunt may be there with us and, uh, this coming next, not this week and coming up the one after, and St. Patty's Day weekend, uh, to come speak to us. He's an investor, and I got to meet him. Uh, he's all seven feet tall. Handsome dude, smart, hard worker. The thing I like about him, guys, is when I met him, we talked about our backgrounds. And he said, you know, Gary, a lot of people think I'm successful because I'm seven feet tall. He said, I didn't get to where I am because I'm seven feet tall. I got to where I am because I work my butt off. I like people who have earned everything they got through, through hard work, determination, and perseverance, and ambition, desire, and passion, which is him. And if any of you have ever played sports before, once you get into the high school level and college level, you got to have some ambition, desire, persistence, resilience, and determination. The pro level, I can't even imagine. I never played pro for anything, right? Um, I mean, I did play uh, a lot of football. But uh, I can tell you the the, the, um, the demands are greater the higher you go. I can't imagine what Mark Blunt went through to be able to be the center for the Celtics. Um, he also played for the Miami Heat towards the end of his career, uh, which is how I met him. I was down there with um, – Near, um, uh, it's called Aventura, where um, uh, Grant Cardone is, his office is. And uh, I got to uh, swap some emails with Grant. And um, lo and behold, got introduced to uh, uh, Mark Blunt. So pretty amazing stuff. Um, I hope you guys are going to make it to this event, man. It's going to be awesome. It's the first one. A lot of you have been asking for this for going over two years now. So uh, thank you for being persistent. Again, being persistent because we're finally able to do it time-wise and everything else. So I had to hire a professional event coordinator to pull it off and, and uh, some other people is it's going to be a spectacular event. So I uh, look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, in the meantime, we'll see you next week. Oh, wait, we got a um, – was this another question here? No, that was not – okay, we're all good on the question. So, all right, so God bless you guys. Uh, I will see you next week. Have an awesome week this week. Um, for those of you coming to the event, congratulations. Your, your business is, is about to take a huge booster shot uh, into the future because we're going to cover uh, content from all five training programs as well as do some really serious networking events so you can meet people, other veteran agents from all over, investors from all over the U.S. and Canada, um, where we share information, techniques. I mean, I, I, can, I can tell you most of my success, not the minority, the majority, is not because of everything I learned is because of me meeting people at events like this, networking, showing up, being there, sharing. It just, um, it's hard to describe if you haven't done one. Okay. In any case, uh, God bless you. I will see you all next week. Um, meantime, have a good night and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye guys.